This is Eric and Eric from Husky Home Brewing. Today we are brewing a one gallon batch of beer. It's been requested by a few of our followers to do a one gallon batch, so if they're interested in brewing beer at their house, we're gonna show you how to do it in the kitchen. So today we're using a one gallon kit. Um, you can pick up a lot of these kits from any local like supermarket or you know just any kind of store that sells something like this. We're gonna show you how, I guess, we do it. How we're gonna do it. How we're gonna do it. Beer making mix. Mix, kit, yeah. Everyday IPA, it's hard to read on the screen. So this is our kit. We just got it from, I don't know, Bed Bath, Bed Bath & Beyond or online. And this is what it contains. A bag of stuff and a bunch of greens. And in the little bag, we have, looks like, two hop additions and beer making yeast. So let's do it. Okay. Now we're gonna show you the equipment we're gonna to use to do this one gallon batch. So we have some kind of spoon. <laughs> <laughs> we got two gallon stock pot, two gallon stock pot. We have some sanitizer. Um, this actually is supposed to come with some of the more current kits. Um, that are out there. Usually comes with a tiny bag of sanitizer, but this one didn't come with one, so we have the sanitizer we usually use. We have a muslin bag for our grains, so we don't have a big mess. We have an airlock and a fermentation two, vessel. It's a two gallon bucket that we picked up at a homebrew shop. It's got a little hole with a grommet in it. Perfect for this. Now if you were to pick up a regular homebrew kit, like a first time homebrew kit, they would typically come with a one gallon fermenter, uh, but ours didn't come with that, so. Last but not least. Oh. Paper towels and a thermometer. Paper towels are key to brewing beer. <laughs> they help. When you're cooling down your beer, you need a thermometer, check the temperature before you pitch your yeast. Anyway, um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna brew some beer. <laughs> On our box it actually has um, instructions. They're very vague, but there are instructions. They don't all have this. Most of them have instructions that tell you a step by step way of how to do it. But we're gonna show you how to do this one without doing this stupid online thing. Instead, you're watching it on our channel, our YouTube channel. That's right. <laughs> First step, we're going to heat up two and a half quarts, or roughly half a gallon of water to 160 degrees and get that ready for our mash. Right. So we're gonna put two and a half quarts in this pan, then we're gonna take our grains, which are right here, and we're going to put them in this muslin bag, and that's what we're going to use to steep our grains. Kind of like making oatmeal. Mm-hmm. In a bag. In a bag. That you're not going to eat. Don't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so right now we're heating up our two quarts, or roughly two quarts of water to 160 degrees so we can mash in. Um, right now we're going to show you us putting the grains inside of a muslin bag. Right now we have our mash water heated up to 160 degrees. We are going to put our muslin bag with all of our grains into our water and we're going to steep that for 60 minutes. So we've just added our grains to our uh, kettle and we're going to keep an eye on the temperature for 60 minutes or so and make sure it's between 144 and 152 uh, and that's per the instructions of the brew kit that we have. You are going to get cold spots, hot spots in your mash. So make sure when you actually take a temperature to check what your mash temperature is, you're taking it from multiple areas 
in your pot. Now, do that, you know, maybe three or four times just to check around the mash. Um, I don't know. Another good thing to remember is when you are reheating the mash, as the grains are sitting on the bottom of the pan, you do not want to scorch them either. So you want to heat them very lightly or set your stove to a very light setting. Just grab a beer, wait. Mm. Wait for an hour. Make sure, wait, Speaking we can have an hour. <laughs> yes, we need, make sure to start a timer. All right, so we are currently at uh, 28 minutes left in our mash. Uh, we've got our grains mashing here. We lost some temperature because of the open container we have, or open kettle. So we are warming it up a little bit and just giving it kind of a stir slash poke, making sure that it's heating evenly. And, drink, and drinking plenty of beer. That's key. Drinking beer is key. Quick update. We got 15 minutes less than 15, about 14 minutes left in our mash. Um, I just put four quarts of water in the stove. We're gonna heat that up to 170 degrees for our uh, grain rinse after the mash. Which is actually a sparge. Sparge? Sparge. Yep. And so essentially what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking our grains and our grain bag, lifting it out and sparging it or rinsing the grains with our four quarts of water that we're heating up to 170 degrees. Yes, so what you wanna do is just, you're just gonna take your muslin bag out, if you're using a muslin bag, you're gonna take the muslin bag out and you're gonna have either yourself or somebody else pour the water on top of that muslin bag. That's gonna get the most sugars out of those grains. Give you the best alcohol content, whatever. You wanna extract everything. Everything. So we're at 165, 170-ish on our four quarts, technically two. Yep. Um, and we're going to get our muzzle leg bag drained out and start rinsing the grains. Sparge. Uh, we're currently sitting at about five quarts or uh, a gallon and a quart roughly um, and we're expected to boil off about a quart during the hour. That's so, something you want to take into account. You want to have a little bit more than a gallon right? Um, because you're going to boil off some. So <clears throat> Essentially, we have drained our grains and rinsed our grains, and now we have wort, our sugary substance, in our pot. We have about five quarts of it. We're expected to boil off one quart, which ends up with four quarts left, roughly a gallon. Um, so now we are going to heat this up and start our boil. Once we start our boil, we'll add our hop additions according to our recipe and start our boil timer. So here we go. Let's do it. So the instructions on this kit um, ask for, we've got two bags of hops. We have Columbus and we have Chinook. Those are two hop varieties we have. At the beginning of the boil, which starts our 60 minute timer, we had add the Columbus hops. We will keep you covered on when we add every time we add it. So we'll do it. It's called a hop break. Hot break. Hot break. It comes up. And if you have a smaller sized pot, it may be wise to have a spray bottle handy so you can spray down, similar to as if you were boiling some noodles for spaghetti. Yep. 
Hey, we're boiling! Look at that. Woohoo! That means two things. Now that we're boiling, A, we're gonna give it a quick little stir, turn the heat down gradually, and add our first hop addition, which is the Columbus hop. First hop addition going in. You wanna smell these guys? These bad boys? Oh, are they any good still? So? Come on, cameraman. Ooh, it's okay. Yeah, it's all right. All right. So we're gonna do timer six zero zero zero. Timer. That's going. And our first top edition has been added. And when we just want to give it a quick stir. Yeah, we want to give it a quick little stir. You'll notice a little bit of the green on top of the hot break. Make sure you don't flow over on your pot. That's when the spray bottle comes handy and keep on boiling. So our next top addition should be at 45 minutes. Yes. Another pro tip, keep an eye on your boil. You don't want to boil too hot. You're going to get a boil over regardless, but um, just make sure you have a nice roaring boil. Keep it steady. Don't get it a little over, you know. Don't go over it. Yeah, don't, don't do it. Don't go don't go too hot. Don't go too hot. We're not welding. Don't be too hot. We're not welding, we're just boiling, so. So we're gonna do our 15 minute into the boil edition, or as we home brewers know, 45 minute edition. 45 minute edition. Uh, this hops and give it a quick stir. Oh. This guy. So we're approaching our 30 minute mark in our boil. Getting close to adding our third hop addition of, uh, what hop was it, Chinook? <laughs> I don't know, it wasn't Chinook. It was not Chinook, it was, it was like Chinook. Mosaic or something. Columbus. Col oh, I was way off. Columbus. Columbus. All right, so. So we're at a 30 minute mark. We're gonna go ahead and add our 30 minute addition. Give it a quick stir and continue boiling. So I have our uh, 15 minute hop addition in my hand. This is quite small because it's one gallon, but uh, here we go. Four, three, two, one, zero. Stir. Stir man. I'm the spoon man. <laughs> so our next hop addition is, is technically five at five minutes left in the boil. Yes. And then we have another hop addition at the, at end, the end of the boil, boil where we flame out. Yes. Or electric out. Electric out, <laughs> yeah. Here we go. You got to add up. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that like close. <laughs> All right. We got five minutes until our last addition now. We got 13 seconds for our last hop addition. After we're done with our hop addition, we're gonna flame out, which is on electric burner. It's turn it off. And we're going to start cooling it down. There we go, flame out. There's a lot of ways you can chill your beer, but this way we are going to fill our sink up with some ice. Gonna fill it up with water. Um, that's about it. <laughs> What do we want here? All right, so we're looking for anything below about 70 degrees or so. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna float this pot inside our sink filled with water and ice and try and kick, kill, cool the wart down as quickly as possible. So currently we're at about 150 from a boil and we've been ice bathing for about a minute or so. So we're gonna let this sit and let it cool. 
Um, in the meantime, what we can do is we can sanitize our two gallon bucket for our fermenting and get that ready for fermenting. There we go. So you want to make sure your airlock is well sanitized as long as long as well as your fermentation chamber as anything post boil is very critical to be sanitized. So our wort is now cool. I'm going to drain our sink that had the cold water in it. Guys, we got the lid sanitized, we got the airlock sanitized. We're going to dump the rest of this out. Don't fear the foam, there's gonna be foam left over in your bucket if you use star sand. And now what we're gonna do is take our wort, add it to our fermentation vessel. I'm gonna leave some of that hop trub on the bottom here. It adds some off flavor in the end. Um, you can add it if you'd like, but totally up to you. I'm gonna leave it out. Now with this added, our lid sanitized and our airlock filled with sanitizer also, I'm going to now add our yeast packet that was included in our package. Now we're gonna take our yeast and add it to the beer. Close up our fermentation vessel. Give it a few good shakes. And now our solution is now considered beer. Now that we've added yeast to it, we can add our airlock. And now we can set this bucket in the closet for two weeks for fermentation, as long as the temperature stays underneath about 70 degrees. Make sure to check out our bottling video for the next step in the brew process. That's the next step you're going to have after you've done your one gallon batch. That's our uh, tutorial on how to brew a one gallon batch. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below. Um, make sure to subscribe to our page. Check out some of our other videos. And we'll see you guys next time. This is the Muskie Homebrew. Cheers, guys.